Brandon Lee. 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 Brandon here we go. Everybody. Someone calm my brother down. Um, for those of you who don't know me, and particular George's family, my name is Brendan James, and I am the best friend of Jody Ray, Juan Fernandez, and uh, her one and true maid of honor. One and true. This is not sympathetic. Juan, Juan, you're true. Um, She's Juan, you're true. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, like, to prepare for this toast, I, I, I talked to, to George uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I asked him, I go, when was, when was the moment that you knew that Jody was the woman that you would chase down no matter what or how many times she would refuse you? How did you know <laughs> she was the one to pursue? And he said it was the, one of the first times, was it the first time you guys played together? Yeah. Music. It was the first time that they played together. And he used one of the smoothest lines in the books and he said, hey, I forgot my guitar player. <laughs> do, do you happen to have a guitar pick with you? And Jody, she reaches into a purse, pulls out like seven, and she goes, yeah, here's one. And, uh, and George, uh, he, he says, when I touched her hand, it felt so soft. It felt downy soft. It felt like the wings of angels were upon me. It felt like God, God himself reached down, grabbed the tears of every baby child, and injected it into my heart. That's how it felt. He said it felt like Zoe Deschanel was singing karaoke. He said it felt like I was in an elevator alone with Ryan Gosling. And he pulls me towards me and kisses me. The lights glow, everything dims, and he turns around and proceeds to kill a man hired to kill me. That's what he told me. You know, he's very poetic. His family, did you guys know he's He's great with metaphors. <laughs> and, I, and, and you know, like me being very curious, I, I asked Jody, I go, Jody, in that day, in that magical moment where you changed George's life forever, what did you feel when he touched your hand? Here you go. And she Bye. took a deep breath. <laughs> she paused and she looked me in the eye and said, Oh, I was sick. I didn't even notice. <laughs> Okay. So, but you, you know, this is the, if you know Jody, you've heard it. Jody, Jody is so cold. She's got ice in her veins, blood in her eyes. Everyone here, turn. You guys are all sitting on chairs. Turn and touch your whole, hug your chair. Everyone, everyone, right now, come on. No. Don't be ashamed, hug your chair just a little. Touch it. That's, that's how it feels to be, to be hugged by Jody. There's no life, no empathy, no sympathy, no remorse, no emotion, no care, no love, no feeling. After tonight, she will remember most of you. And so it wasn't until we, I believe this or not, became a youth leader at church, and she became the, the music ministry leader. Around that time, we became close to one another. So close that, in fact, when she graduated from high school, she moved to LA to go to this school known as Cal State University Northridge, <laughs> AKA the worst school of all time. <laughs> CSUB? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, 
And when she <laughs> when I when she started going to school there, I me not knowing what to do with my life at the time. Some of you are familiar with this feeling. Some of you are there right now. <laughs> I went and followed suit where I started my glorious career as a working graveyard at, at Chevron. <laughs> and, but, but I wasn't Jody's only roommate. And I wasn't the only one working at Chevron. Mr. Michael O'Neill Lapine, will you stand up and take a bow? <laughs> This man, believe it or not, in his younger days, <laughs> looked like Rufio from Hook. <laughs> this man was handsome. His bench 250 pounds five times. He was beautiful. <laughs> and we lived with Jody, and it was amazing. We loved Jody so much. She'd come home from school, and we'd be playing video games, and we could hear her opening up the door, and we'd be like, oh my gosh, Yodi's home, Yodi's here, Yodi. We'd come to the door, for, here, I'll grab your jacket for you. And then he'd grab her, I'll grab your backpack for you. She was, she didn't know how to react to this. Uh, I mean, at, at first, we used to call her Chody. <laughs> until she found out what a chode was. <laughs> so we changed it. But we did a lot of things together. We'd go to Costco together. Jody would buy some frozen wings so she could make her specialty wings. I would buy some sausages. Michael O'Neill Lapine, AKA Nipple. <laughs> Nipple would buy sausages too. We love sausages. And we'd have a chicken sausage and sausage fest at night where we'd get together. And you know, in living together, that was the first time. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was the first time I had a girlfriend. And it was while I was living with Jody that this word occurred. It's this wonderful lady uh, named Kristen. Kristen Crook. <laughs> from a place called Smallville. And she would come every uh, what, Wednesday, Thursday night, I don't remember. Tuesday night. I don't even know, because I don't care about her anymore. She cheated on me with some guy named Cal L. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. But we, we lived together. We loved each other. It was the best times in the world until a nipple betrayed us and moved away. <laughs> but in all those times, I'd go with Jody to buffets, restaurants, and we would eat. We'd go to beaches, we'd go to Malibu, we'd go to Pepperdine University, we'd go to different churches. And some of you here, through those weird trips, is how you met uh, not only Jody, but uh, myself. <laughs> and uh, we, we just went everywhere together. And during this time, she became a woman. She learned to pluck. <laughs> she knew how to put on some lip gloss and be popping. She knew how to wax. She learned to shave every day. And she became beautiful. She went from sea cups. Uh, oh, <laughs> she went from tea cups at Disneyland to sea cups at Magic Mountain. Are you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about? And it was during this time where she just looked like and she became this woman that looks like Megan Diaz's younger sister that I thought to myself, man, if I can't find an amazing and beautiful woman that I love, I wouldn't mind settling for Jody. <laughs> she would make a beautiful, wonderful back of life. It was amazing. She's a wonderful woman. She's great. She's spectacular. And then George came. <laughs> He ruined this. <laughs> so you gotta understand. I didn't like George. In fact, I don't like him now. But damn it, I respect you. You lucky son of a. <laughs> and this, let me tell you why I respect George. And let me get next to him. So uh, he can punch me after I'm done. <laughs> I respect him because he put up with disgusting <laughs> Filipino talks, <laughs> which I probably could not do, and I am Filipino. <laughs> he put up, no, you know, I, I don't even want to say put, put up. He's been, you, this, the, the ring, this whole wedding, this ceremony, this is just a show. He's been married to her for years. And if you've ever seen how he treats her, 
you know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> this man treats this woman like he loves this woman. And I know a lot of guys who say they love their woman and don't treat them like they love them. But this man treats her like he loves her because he does. And he's not afraid to show it. Oh, believe me. He is not afraid to show it. Oh, stop. But he, he didn't just marry her. He married us. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I know plenty of guys who would take the woman and just keep them to them in, to themselves and never let the girl go out. He let her she let, he let her have her freedom. He never took anything away from her. He added himself into the equation. Do you understand? And he got to know us. He got he became close to my brother, who is one of the most conceited and self-centered men. He thinks he's a king, but he is, hey, he, hey, no, he, he is not the king. Humberto is the king. I'm going really deep. He, be, he befriended Boney. Who is a jerk? <laughs> he thinks 9-11 was a conspiracy. <laughs> he doesn't believe in Obamacare. <laughs> what? <laughs> and you know, he, he befriended Tim, Timmy Boy, who agrees with everything. No matter how negative it is, he will agree with you. He's a very positive man. But more than that, you know what? He, he married the women in Jody's family, who are absolutely crazy, who are absolutely bipolar and loud. And you look, Jihad and Gilbert, they're married to the family. They know what I'm talking about. That's what they're not. Look, you know what I'm talking about. They're crazy. These women are insane. And, uh, and, he, and he took the time to, to get to know them, to get to know all of Jody's nieces and nephews and godkids. And more than anything, he took the time to get to know me, who is, and I am, look, I, look, you don't even gotta say it. I know I'm weird. More than that, I am manipulative, I'm a hypocrite, and I'm a know-it-all. And he puts up with that. It's disgusting how much he loves me. This man is sick. And if he could put up with me and my loudmouthness and my horribleness, he can put up with anything that Jody has to throw. Because, you know, Jody doesn't have that much to throw. Like I said, she's emotionless. She's cool and chill. But the way that he, oh man, the way that you love her, and I'm going to tell you this from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for not taking my best friend away from me. For not becoming a jealous douche and, and cutting me away from her. That you trust her enough that she wouldn't do anything to betray you. And I'm gonna tell you, there's a lot of times where I try to trick her to say to say something negative about you. And she doesn't say nothing. This woman, I don't know how loves you so much. She loved you so much, man. And I got, you know, I, and, and me. Me, you guys, together, you have my undying loyalty. And let me tell you this. The one thing I could, I could just tell you is to constantly grow and grow and grow and constantly strive to be that man to live up to this woman. And you, you live up to this man's heart because this man's heart is huge. He has made you into a human being. <laughs> I have never seen her affectionate until he came along. Never once. So love each other. I love you both. You have my loyalty. You have my ears. You have everything that I have to give. I love you both. And more than that, man, 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 continue to grow together towards God towards God, towards God. God bless you guys.
I've hustled harder than most. I'm a beast on these streets, got a revolver, I told them. 